welcome. Um, uh, who are you? Jeffrey Clinton. Uh, do you have a middle name? You have to have a middle name. Yeah, I do. It's uh, Donzel. Donzel. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Yeah, man. Have you ever gone by that? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I, no. Mine is Marshall. I've clearly never gone by that one. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want I don't want the kind of power that comes with that middle name. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, man. So, um, and of course, the last time I saw you was at Tour de Midnight. Yeah. Um, we survived that ride. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, uh, how did you get started um, road biking? Mostly, right? You don't gravel. You don't do gravel. I was doing. A, no, I don't do gravel. Okay. Um, I got started riding road biking. <clears throat> I think really, I, I took this job right. So I was going through like, a, like I, I would say an awakening in my life. Yeah. Right. I, um, you know, I had done a lot of like crazy corporate jobs, and you know, I was making up my mind that I didn't want to continue to try to be that corporate guy. Yeah. And so I, I, I took a job out at a Franz Haas Machinery. Met, I had a great, great boss. Yeah. His name was uh, Mike Fleetwood. Okay. Um, we met, and during the interview, all I talked about was mountain biking and cycling. Mm -hmm. He was just like, I can't tell you you're hired. You know, and he speaks like that. He's English. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I really like you. You know, kind of like that. <laughs> and so I was like, cool, man. And then he's he kind of, he's the kind of guy where he is, uh, he's passive, but he he's like an artist. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll see a... Uh, He'll see the ability to paint a pretty picture, okay. a beautiful picture with a person who wants to have the picture painted. Okay. And he's been like that. With, he's like that with every single last one of his employees. Um, nice. okay. I would say he's a strong, somebody that I feel like is a, a leader that I like to emulate. Um, okay. Because he's actually a very great person to me. Nice. Um, so he actually, you know, took me out on a bike ride on a mountain bike. I thought I was doing something, you know. Yeah. yeah. Did like 30 miles. I was dying. Yeah. And I thought we were moving fast. It was only like 13 miles an mm -hmm. hour. And then he looked at me and he said, um, I got a bike for you. Mm -hmm. This guy's got like four or five bikes. He just, he lets yeah. me use his like lowest bike. Yeah. And I fell in love with it. Yeah. And I eventually bought it from him. And, okay. And I ride it all the time. I rode it all the time. So. Um, and that was a road bike. It was a road bike. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, um, but where, where was that at? That was here in Richmond. It was here in Richmond. Okay. That was here in Richmond. Okay. Um, did you like? Did you start doing solo rides? Did you start like meeting a group? Like how that how that go from? Yeah, like when you first got the ride, you just did solo rides. Like what's what's well, what so the story? It was just him and I really riding together. Okay, because like, I was just learning about it. Sure. And so I, you know, I I just knew I liked it. Like I'm yeah. like, oh, the breeze, the being outside, mm -hmm. you know, just the yeah. the purity of it. Yeah. And I just enjoyed it. Um, and then, you know, we started talking about speed. Mm -hmm. and then cadence and yeah. then power and i'm like okay then the engineer starts coming out of me like yeah. okay how do i make this power to speed and, yeah. and then the comp competition comes out of you and and then we hired another guy okay his name was uh, andre campbell okay <laughs> yeah right <laughs> exactly you know where this is going yeah <laughs> so he walks in the office and uh you know i at this point man i've been in i have been in like an executive for like maybe 15 years like 15, mm -hmm. 12 years and i had seen it all seen all types of personalities whatever he walks in i'm peeping him he's peeping me and you're trying to figure out okay we got to have a situation where he's going to be try to be like the head we call them hnic's you yeah. know the term. <laughs> yeah. trying to be mm -hmm. the, the number one you know black guy in the group but it was like nah it was cool like as soon as he walked in like we just get dapped each other up yeah. and hugged each other yeah like, what's up man he was like yeah man i said man when was you born, man? He goes, oh, he's like, I'm born in August. Like, what? Like, me too. I'm born in August, you know? I was like, man, no way. Like, there's no way. Like, I think we're going to be all right. And so, um, he, you know, we just we just hit it off, like, from yeah. immediately. Nice. Um, and then it was just me, him, and uh, Mike. We ride all the time. Mm -hmm. We corralled a couple of our other, you know, office mates into it. Yeah. Done a couple of centuries. Did events out, out of the office. Yeah. We would get off work at, like, 3. If we had, like, a really bad day, 2 or yeah. 3 o'clock. Leave the job and do like 30 miles from work. Like, just because my boss was like, you know what? I feel like going to ride a bike. And we would just go. Like, and he, would even, he wouldn't even mind if we would just leave at like 2.30 to go ride. Because he realized that um, the better we felt, or the, the better our health was, the better we performed at work. And we right. did. We performed so much better. Mm -hmm. Not being in a situation where we're doing the carrot stick principle where 
I, you know, I hold this carrot in front of you, but I beat you with the stick to make you yeah. eat it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, people don't, you know, it doesn't work for people anymore. You know, yeah. we're looking for fulfillment and Mike really, he, he got it. You know, okay. He got it. So that's how I started. Okay. Um, so rolling around with Andre, mm-hmm. um, Where'd y'all go ride at? Where'd y'all go ride? Uh, we would always do uh, the trail. We started the Capitol mm-hmm. Trail. We didn't know anything else. Mm-hmm. We were the first ride Andre did. He had a uh, basketball shorts on, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he used to he joked us, man. He was like, "I'm not riding that tight stuff with my, mm-hmm. my stuff hanging out." I was like, "All right, man. Like, go ahead, bro. He's like, go ahead. You." He's like, "I need to buy these shoes." Like, yeah. I would I would recommend you buy the shoes, man. And he goes, "No, nah, I ain't doing that either." And so he gets on the bike. Mm-hmm. And he, 30 miles later, he's like all chafed up. And mm-hmm. he's like, man, yeah. I think I need to get some, uh, I mm-hmm. think I need to get a bike suit. Because this dude had literally had bike shorts that were like down to his shins. Yeah. Like, like uh, it was funny, man. Yeah. I mean, we were having a blast. And he was wearing these uh, these blue these blue uh, uh, running shoes riding. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was crazy. But uh, we, had a, we had a blast, man. I love those guys. I really do. Oh, I'll have to ask, ask him about that that yeah. ride going out there. Yeah. Um, now, did you when you started road biking? Like, did you already have kit, or did you you did not? Okay, I didn't have anything? Okay, I had nothing. Like, it was really was all Mike. He was saying, you know, he I walked in the office one day, mm-hmm. and he goes, you know, I'm gonna make you a minimalist. That's exactly like what he said. This mm, dude is okay. he's okay. smooth, man. Mm-hmm. Like this dude say three words, and mm-hmm. uh, there'd be so much in him. He said, I'm gonna make you a minimalist. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I go around his his uh, his his desk, look at his computer, and he's like telling me all the things I need to buy, right. for a bike. Like we're shopping for bike stuff at work, you know what I mean? Like because we if we had a tough day, lunchtime comes. Sometimes we miss lunch because we'd be shopping for bikes at work. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was just pretty cool. I could I could I can see that finding somebody else. Yeah. Who's really into it? Like, it's like, yeah, I, I can got someone else I can get them really into. It's like, why not? Like, he, yeah, yeah he's probably not going to be thinking about, like, I should be working. This is awesome. Like, we're talking about bike stuff. Yeah. So, and the whole time, what's happening, what's, what's in the background, people are understanding. I'm getting to know this person. I'm trusting this person. I learn his leadership style. When I'm riding on a bike with this person, I'm seeing and understanding what it means to be a leader. Yeah. Because like, if you're pulling a group of people, you're responsible for all of them, you're calling out all the dangers in front. You're, you know, trying to figure out what the route's going to be so that you yeah. can make sure everybody's safe. It has a lot of nuances with business. Yeah. Um, and what's what you don't understand, like, what's interesting about Mike is he's he's training you without training you. Hmm. It's, okay. It's actually really cool like, yeah. to just kind of to kind of get that. And uh, yeah. I don't think I've never met anybody like that before. Like, nice. ever. Um, yeah, there are... Like the the team skills of of, of learning learning how to ride in a group, mm-hmm. um, and not crash into each other, and <laughs> and, and, and coordinating and, and trusting, you know, everybody else that the guy behind you or the lady or whoever is not going to speed ahead and crash into the back of you, um, or the person in front's going to ride steady and not yeah. you know and not jam on the brakes all the time. So, um, yeah, there are definitely skills to get get worked on there that you're right. People don't think about. They don't, and you're making a bond because mm-hmm. now you're sharing in a struggle. And so we're we're both riding, sharing in the struggle. Yeah, I'm getting to know about your character. Yeah, you're getting to know about my character. Like I might not. So one of the things about people learning about me, I was like, I might not be the fastest guy, but I never quit. You know, I'm going to cross the finish line. I'm always going to finish. Um, and you'll start seeing like some people like they might just quit. Yeah. Um, but you learn about each other, and mm-hmm. that's what you know. That's what I really like about cycling. I learn about the person that okay. I'm riding next to. Okay. So. Um. When did you join with the Wolf Pack? How'd that happen? Was that a slow progression? Did you just so indoctrinated uh, right off the back? I mean, like, so everything is like with me is always a story, right? So <laughs> that's what we're here for. <laughs> Andre and I were like, I like to barbecue, so I was smoking some ribs and some chicken, like, mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. One day, and we would get together like every other weekend. We'd have beer, and we. Like, we could put away some beer, right? And then I was looking at him like, man, you know, we're really great at cooking and eating and drinking. Mm-hmm. I said, um, what if we took this thing seriously? What would happen? So I challenged him. Mm-hmm. I said, um, if I lose weight, let's let's have a weight. This is like, I think it was my birthday. Okay. I said, if I, if I lose weight before you, you have to buy me any kid I want. 
And if you lose weight before me, I got to buy you any kit you want. Mm, and he kind of okay. looked at me. And he's like, you know, this Andre look. And he sucks <laughs> his teeth. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, what, man? What? Because, you know, for me, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. Like, undoubtedly. And he's looking at him. He's looking at me like, no, I'm definitely going to win. And so, because we're highly competitive. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm doing this on purpose because yeah. I can kind of see where this is going. And I yeah. don't necessarily like it. Yeah. And one of the things that I was having in the back of my mind, like I said, I was going through an awakening in my life is, you know, I've, my parents, my parents, as they've gotten, have, as they had gotten older, yeah, the way that they had celebrated and, and reduced stress is by drinking okay, or by cooking something or by, you know, whatever. And I was thinking in my head, what could be an alternate path in my mm -hmm. life that I could take or legacy that I could leave my child so that when he has something where he's trying to get out of his system, what could he do? Yeah. Versus let me go pick up a bottle. Yeah. Or let me go do this. And because I'd seen it not benefit anybody that ever did it. Right. At all, ever. It, although it always comes with health complications. You always die early. Right. It's always a heart issue. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, it's always a, an, an issue. And I said, you know, let's, let's see what happens if we take the path least traveled. And I've always been that type of person to take the path least traveled. And so Andre goes, cool, let's go. So we okay. just start riding. Okay. Start riding, you know, 20 pounds and a 30 pounds, three turns of 50, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know, three months later, he beats me. Okay. Right? But yeah. he beat me, but yeah. what did he get? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And I didn't win, but what did I get? We both still won. Yeah. And then it turned into, okay, I like going like 18, 19 miles an hour. Yeah. And then we saw, we had a friend that was out there uh, mm. who was having some challenges. Yeah. Um, he's going through some life changes. We're like, let's pull him in. Yeah. Let's ride with him, you know, because we're like, let's, let's see where this thing goes. Like, because the way that we were taught, I was taught to deal with stress or is maybe pick up a gun and shoot stuff or drink mm -hmm. a beer. Like, so let's, yeah. let's, let's see where this goes. Yeah. He starts riding with us. Next thing you know, he ends up getting a new job. Okay. You know, he gets really fast at biking. We started riding. We rode from Chesterfield to Ashland and back. Yeah. We did a, a century back. And then Andre calls me up after he hits 220 and he goes, it's time, man. I, mean, I said, what you mean it's time, man? He goes, call Chris up, man. Let's set this up. We about to go out here and see if we can ride with Wolfpack. And I was like, man, I don't know. He's like, no, nah, let's just do it. So we went out. Yeah. We, we set up We set up the call. Yeah. We went riding with him, man. And yeah. I was still like struggling, even though I had lost like so much weight Andre just went out there and he was he showed up on his single speed bike oh wow out okay. at Ashland and was just like out sprinting everybody really on single speed bro and I've never seen a man so happy about life and uh they just that's they we that's how it started and yeah Kenny shows up one day Ken, Kenny Waddy mm -hmm. yeah um he wanted to, he wanted to talk to us yeah you know we met him out at West Creek and yeah. this is like towards the end of maybe I don't know if it was last year or two years ago and he said, hey, you guys want to be in the pack. Yeah. You know, like, let's, let's see what we can do. Because I see y'all out here riding and watching yeah. you on Strava. And I didn't know people were watching. I thought Strava was like, <laughs> I was putting my stuff up there. I didn't think anybody was really looking at it. People and he watch. goes, and I see y'all like are putting down some numbers. Like, let's, let's, what, what do you want to do? And Andre was like, all right, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's how we ended up in the pack. We just okay. kind of like riding bikes and they showed up and asked us. Okay. So, um, how's it feel to ride like the, like, to, to have a bike group, you know, to have some people you ride with regularly, you know? I mean, because you, cause you kind of always, but proud. like... I feel proud. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like it... So like, um, how can I, I think of it? So like I say, once again, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a deep person. So like you spend a lot of, I spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of time by yourself in life when you're tr like, tr specifically for me. Mm -hmm. My father would always say to me uh, as growing up, he's like, no, you're the 10% because I would be doing things like helping him with his his test that he needed to pass in the Navy. Mm -hmm. right? I would be doing like geometry and trigonometry at a young age and going to engineering classes in like elementary and middle school. Yeah. And he was like, he basically told me, you're going to be by yourself a lot. Yeah. And and it's not necessarily because of a, like, well, maybe it is. It's being somebody like that makes you awkward. But then the other thing too, it actually makes you think about the bigger picture. Yeah. And then at that point in your life, a lot of folks aren't thinking about the things you're thinking about. They're thinking mm -hmm. about 
you know, Susie Q and, you know, her body and all this type of stuff. And I'm not thinking about that stuff. Yeah. And so, but to make it, I've always been by myself. Yeah. Whether I'm getting my, whether I was studying to get my degree, I always studied alone. Yeah. Um, until I got an A on the test and everybody wanted to talk to me. Yeah. Um, when I got a professional job and I was the only black man in the building, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Until, and nobody really like bought into it until I started making positive changes and yeah. then everybody wants to be on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so I've, to, to be in a group of people um, is actually, I'm, I'm proud of that. Yeah. Because I think people seeing what's possible Mm-hmm. It's, it's attracting them, yeah, and then it's changing every. It's changing people's lives that you touch as they as they show up, yeah. Um, that's I'm proud of that. I'm actually proud of that. And whoever comes to the Wolf Pack, yeah, um, they're gonna be changed because yeah. nobody's showing up there for mediocrity. They're showing yeah. up because hey, you know what? I see what this is doing for this guy and this guy and this young lady and this person and that person. I wanna, I want, I want to see what's going on there. Okay. So I'm proud of that. Well, good, man. I, um, I, uh, I, uh, talking to Tamara, um, like it is good to hear about the, the, the wolf pack, people riding, enjoying it. Um, and it is good to see black people on bikes riding together. Mm-hmm. Like it is just, it just feels good. Mm-hmm. Um, because we see so few of us, mm-hmm. right. Out riding. Um, so, um, I'm curious how that, how that is. So, mm-hmm. um, so I thought I'd ask about that, man. Um, what I could tell you is uh, how what is the experience I have as a black cyclist? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and understand that we yeah, all don't have yeah. the same experience as a, as, yeah. a, as, a, as a black person right. and experience. We're not a monolith, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah, and I, I learned that as a teenager. Um, like we all don't think the same way, but as myself riding a bike, I know. That when I'm riding alone, I'm far more um, exposed when I'm riding than when I'm riding with a group. Um, what I can tell you is more things happen to me when I'm by myself than when I'm with a group of people. Yeah. And almost nothing happens to me when when the group is a mixed group. So mm-hmm. what I mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Um, what I can tell you is as I've been riding around in Chesterfield, I know when I'm by myself, the demographic that usually tends to try to heckle me is. You know, white men mm-hmm. that are between the ages of like eighteen and thirty, mm-hmm. and they're usually calling me, you know, nigger. Yeah. They're usually throwing spit bottles at me. Yeah. Or they're sicking their dogs on me or pulling guns on me. Yeah. And uh, I'm just like, I'm forty year old man yeah. riding a bike, making the world a better place. Um, yeah. You can Google me, go on LinkedIn. I've given a lot of people a lot of jobs, changed mm-hmm. a lot of people's lives. And I got two kids and a wife, and I'm contributing to society. But since I'm on this bike, mm-hmm. I'm all of these other things. So you, you, they, you don't. People don't see the humanity in cyclists. Yeah, and I mm-hmm. think yeah. that is, I think that's what's happening a lot in a lot of other things. We don't see the humanity in each other. Right. We just see each other as like things and objects. And um, you know, I would challenge anybody to just see the humanity in another person when you see them. Like right. it's just it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, um, yeah, I I agree. There's there's people who, you know, they see a person on a bike, and and you know, it's somebody's you know mom, somebody's dad, it's my brother, like, mm-hmm. and they and they may not think they don't think about all that stuff. Whenever then they they throw the bottle, they 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 spit at you or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, roll coal or whatever, you know, yeah. with the truck and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, they they disassociate that that was just that's a that's a regular person just out trying to enjoy themselves. Um, and then better their life. Um, and it's unfortunate it's that way, you know? Um, but it's what we deal with. But I'm glad that as you don't experience that in the, as much when you win a group, you know? No, not at all. It never yeah. happens. It yeah. never happens in a group. Like, people feel brave um, when you're by yourself, but they don't feel so brave when there's like three or four of you out there. That's all, you know? And yeah. And no one's ever gotten out. Well, me and Andre have been followed. Like, we were doing a ride in Virginia Beach, and um, this is quite interesting. Like, and I, I have a house in Virginia Beach, and we're doing a ride, our century down there. Yeah. And we're going down London Bridge, like mm-hmm. a well known traveled area for cyclists. This guy um, basically tries to run us into the curb. Um, 
you know, and then we are, we're going down the road, it was me, Andre, and it was a, the, another young man that we ride with, Tyreek, I was saying your name, Tyreek, yeah. I didn't want to, yeah. but Tyreek, <laughs> and uh, the guy pulls off, like, into the neighborhood, and Andre was like, this dude almost hit us, blah, 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 his Jamaican came out, yeah. and I was like, Andre, <laughs> we're in Virginia Beach, relax, you don't know what's going on, a lot of these guys are military, Yeah, whatever, because it's a, it's a bigger area, mm-hmm. so you get more of a mix of things going on. So we, we keep riding. The guy get, comes back. He's dropped off his kid, and now he's following us, and he's got a pit bull in the car, mm-hmm. right? And then he, he's, he yells something at Andre, and Andre's like, all right, what's up? You know, kind of thing. <laughs> and then the guy pulls down in an alley. I said, Andre, do not go down that alley. Yeah. Okay, we're in a city. Yeah. Um, these are city rules. You yeah. go down an alley, no one can see what's happening. That's mm-hmm. what he wants. Don't go down an alley. Mm-hmm. He's like, all right, fine, fine. I said, let's go up here, mm-hmm. stop in public, and have a very public conversation. Mm-hmm. If he means us harm, he won't stop in public and speak with us. Yeah. And he did it. Okay. He, he literally parked in the parking lot at the Farm Fresh, a shut down Farm Fresh, mm-hmm. cut a cut a corner to the gas station, yeah. and just sat and watched us. So at which point we had to call the police on him. Yeah. Because like I said, whatever he went home to get, yeah, he was he was ready. Like because we're not small guys. Yeah. So why would he then feel very confident right. to come out and mess with three, you know, in shape guys on a bike? Yeah. You know, he, he went home to get something. So why don't we just hang out right here, call the police and let them sort it out? So we were just riding bikes. We were not it's just people are funny, man. It's quite interesting. Better to be safe. Humanity. Yeah, we gotta be. Hum- we have to see ourselves as human. See the humanity in each other. Yeah. Um, so y'all went down to Virginia Beach to to do a century. Yeah. Okay. Um, just the one time. Is it? Um, just the one time. Yeah, we tried to plan one for the Wolf Pack uh, this year. Yeah. But it, it just didn't work out. The weather didn't work out. Um, and yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean it won't happen again. Okay. We'll try again. Yeah. Should be more time. So it's a flat rides. century, man. Like it's a lot of FTP slash tempo work, but <laughs> man, it's it's a fun it's it's a fun place to ride when you're getting tired of climbing all the time. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the bridges out there are probably going to be the only climbing um, out yeah. there. Um, I've done one century in the Virginia Beach area, and yeah, it was super flat. Yeah, windy in places, but oh, real yeah. flat. Yeah, the wind is no joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still fun though. Still fun. Um, so wait. Um, how much weight did you lose riding, roughly? Not that you need it. All right, started at three twenty. I'm at like two sixty two right now. Okay. And I'm like I'm cutting. Okay. Right now, so okay. like winter time the, is mm-hmm. like you know everybody. Nobody's clocking this, but winter time is when everybody goes the hardest and mm-hmm. getting ready for this you know the opening mm-hmm. of the season. So I'm I'm still cutting. Okay. And so the goal really is to get to 220 by the time the season opens up. Wow. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm I'm going hard right now. Okay. Yeah, real hard. So wait, three three twenty two sixty two sixty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you feel that? Do you feel I that? I do. Okay. I do. Like I feel um. I have more like a spring in my step. Okay. Um, I have way more energy. Okay. Um, I get more accomplished throughout the day. Okay. I find myself pulling people. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say if their energy is low, you know, my wife is, uh, my wife's three years older than me. Okay. Right. And uh, she finds that, you know, that I have way more energy, like running around the house, doing stuff, getting Mm -hmm. things done than I ever did. And I need that because I have young kids and I'm always running around with them. So I definitely feel it. But in the past, like right now, after work, if I were like still 320, I'd be asleep. Yeah, I'd be somewhere just knocked out, tired, just worn out from sitting in front of a computer typing. You know, I wouldn't have been able to make that drive. I'd be somewhat passed out, sleep. How old are your kids? Two. Two. Yeah. Wait, you have wait, you have two kids, and they're both two. Uh, so I have two kids. My son is eight. My daughter's five. Okay. Yeah. Um, do they notice any difference? Oh thinking? my goodness! Yeah. yeah, my son comes in every day. Says, "Your daddy, your stomach's smaller." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still there. It's still there, daddy, but it's smaller now. <laughs> All right, man, shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, um, uh, you riding and 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 making a change to lose weight is a um, 
a gift your kids will hopefully at some point they'll they'll be able to rack up, but they'll certainly benefit from mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know um, you making those healthier choices you know because um, you know you can play with it more you can do more Absolutely. stuff that kind of thing yeah you know? I actually went and um, so my son's really into basketball okay right and I loved basketball it was the only thing that kept people from really picking on me in high school because I always had like a 4.0 okay. like GPA mm-hmm. like all yeah. through mm-hmm. school yeah um, and so, and I never went to lunch. I go read books in the library. Mm-hmm. So basketball was the only thing that made people like like me, right? So, and I played that. I was like playing varsity as a freshman, like in basketball, nice. okay. like in high school, and like he's really into it. And so I'm like, I'm pumped. Like I'm so pumped that he likes it. I'm okay. Like, I hope he likes basketball. He really <laughs> does. So he has, but he has no idea. Like I'm a, I'm the kind of guy like. I'm not naturally good at anything Mm -hmm. except maybe reading books, but Mm -hmm. I have like this drive where I just, I will just continuously just keep doing it until I am good at it. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, I just, I've always been that way. As a kid, I would wake up when I, when I found out I I was in love with basketball, um, I would get up like at seven, I was seven years old and found out I was in love with basketball. I get up before everybody, 6 a.m. and I go out and practice dribbling in front of the house in Navy housing. Nobody would get mad. Mm-hmm. My parents didn't have a whole lot of cash. My dad was like, he was an enlisted guy, mm-hmm. and so I would, we would have like these rungs, and over the over the front door. Yeah, and I would just sit there and I would shoot into the rungs of the house. Yeah, and you hear the ball go, brrr, and you, it, you can hear it through the whole house, but nobody got upset, you know. And so, but they were just this kid just out there practicing his shooting, yeah, his dribbling, and like it was. I'm I'm just that kind of guy. I'll just keep going at it until eventually I'm good at something. Um, Practice takes you a take you a long way. Yes, sir. Sure. Um, and apparently that's showing up in the in the in the writing. Mm-hmm. Um, as you're you're working on your FTP. Yeah. Um, and when did you start looking at that? When did you start like you go from like I'm riding, I'm enjoying riding, I'm pushing myself, but like. What are my numbers? Like, when did that go? Like, I need to start looking at my, my numbers and stuff like that, man. Um, so, when did I start looking at my FTP? Mm-hmm. I would say towards um, the end of last year. Okay. Um, because I, I'm a numbers guy. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm just, I'm into the, I'm into the engineering aspect of it. Like, the statics and dynamics, um, you know all that type of stuff all I like cars I have a hobby of building and working on cars mm-hmm. like I I'm into those things and if I can put a put like a marker in the sand mm-hmm. and know that I can reach that goal then mm-hmm. that's what I'm gonna go towards and yeah. so I also realize that FTP is this number yes mm-hmm. but it's like it's it, it's a number that if you can get it high enough and I can get it high enough where I can when you're doing 20 miles an hour yeah. and, and I'm only in tempo, mm-hmm. I know I'm good for the rest of the ride. Mm, okay. Yeah. You know? Right. Or if I'm like in an endurance or I mean, if I'm in zone one and zone two and you're in zone four, I'm not doing as much work. And so I know that, you know, it, it gives me the ability to last longer during a ride. And then I start getting into the weights of the thing because I started seeing all these guys and, you know, just really seeing, we talk about the group aspect of being in a group I start seeing like other people honestly like me Mm -hmm. that are being excellent at something yeah and you know regardless of what somebody might feel about that that actually is a huge thing to people like can I see somebody like me doing something yeah yes like because I can I can relate to that 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 struggle and what it would go through to to want to do something like this and so when I see those individuals being excellent it makes me want to be excellent and that you know that that's actually what's happening in Wolfpack with the, with the Haywoods and the Kenny Waddies and the mm-hmm. Chris Clarks and the Mark Saunders and the Andre Campbells and and the Tamara Arnolds and the Lynn Christian Lynn Jeffries. Yeah, I said your whole name. Like there's everybody's looking at that like how I want to be excellent. Yeah. Because they've made it possible to be excellent. Right. You know. So. It is good to see everybody out there pushing themselves mm-hmm. as a group and being encouraged to do so. Um, that that is it's not empowering, but like it is like yeah. and and so it is as I mentioned wrong. It is it is awesome to see the group out there pushing themselves and like continue to do a positive thing out there. So, um, so you've been monitoring. You started looking at the FTP. You're seeing some increases. Mm-hmm. 
Like, are you just like you just doing the rides, or are you like are you doing workouts, training? Like, what's oh, I'm doing everything. Okay. Like, so I'll do, um, so I'll do the rides, but the rides for me are like you you kind of go through these like um, stages in riding, right? Because mm-hmm. like, you're because it does affect your mind and how you think about cycling and like really just your whole life. Um, so I, I started wanting to just keep up with the group. Like, okay, I can keep up with the yeah, group. Yeah. And then you say, hey, now I want to keep up with the race pace group. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, now, yeah. Right. So how do you keep up the race pace group? And so in order to be able to keep up the race pace group, you have to supplement mm-hmm. other than just group rides because the group rides don't make you really strong unless you are like, unless your level of fitness is below the 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 fitness uh-huh. of the group ride. Yeah. So in order for me to grow, I have to supplement with training. And so that means getting in there, just doing it, doing yeah. the training, doing the weightlifting, doing the eating, figuring out what's working for my body, looking at what I'm putting into it, um, reviewing like things like sugars, carbs, proteins, like I'm I'm doing everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's because like like I said, I was never naturally good at anything. Yeah. But I was always good at picking up a book and studying and reading to figure out how I could be good at something. Right. It's just, you know, just my personality. Okay. Um, when you, when you, when you set that, that you and Andre set that bet of like, let's who's going to, was it like just 90 days? Who's going to lose most weight in 90 days? I think yeah. it was, I think it was, might've been 60 days. Okay. 60 yeah. days. Did you then like, did you start like researching stuff then or did you like immediately just like, so, was so, it just a ride and you were just doing that was that was just the writing I was doing, and then looking at what I was putting in my mouth. Okay. And so I actually started kind of. So I had help, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? I got great health insurance. Let me go get a, a you know, a yeah. nutritionist. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I kind of started cheating with that when I got a nutritionist. Andre's just Andre. He just fucking did it. So <laughs> I would I would have got a nutritionist, and so like they start you know setting up meals for me, what I should eat, how I should eat. Um, Based on like my blood work, like I would get my blood work pulled, see what's in it, okay. what's going on. Um, they would give me like meal plans throughout the week, so I was like, I was really about getting it down, getting okay. that, about that life. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> and then I just threw the cycling, getting into that on top of it. Um, mm-hmm. Right after, like I would say last, like the spring of last this, not spring of this year. Yeah. With the FTPs and the numbers and yeah. looking into the gearing of the bikes and. Like what best suits me as a cyclist? What type of cyclist I am? Yeah. Because they have different types of cyclists. Like, yeah. what are your strengths? Are you a climber? Mm-hmm. Are you a sprinter? Are you a, like a TT or are you a like um, an all arounder? Can you do all those things? And yeah. so, I'm just researching more about me, and then how can I add the second the second thing to my repertoire so I can be an all arounder? Yeah. Um, okay. Um. So are you a, you're 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 applying this? Are you just you doing events and things like that as well? Um, you know, we did you tour, like tour to midnight. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've done tour to midnight. I did um, Mac One Love. That oh, okay. sucked. Really? I mean, it sucked in a good way. Okay. Like it's not an easy ride. Okay. Like it's not an easy ride. Um, I did um, Seagull Century. Mm-hmm. I've done Heart of Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done, oh my gosh, what is it, Eastern Shore Ride Between Two Waters? Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, Between the Waters. I've done that one. I've done both those rides out there because there's one at so, the end of the year, one in the summertime. Tour to Shore in the Tour summer the and then Between the Waters. Um, at the end. When, did y'all go this year, Between the Waters? No, or I did last that year? last okay. year. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. I'm um, trying to think, what other ride did I do? I've done the Woods to the Beach Ride. I've done the, jeez, I've done a lot of rides this year. Yeah, my kids have loved it. They and I take them everywhere with me. Oh, really? Yeah, they want nice. bicycles. Like they already want them. Like this is what they want. This they're convinced this is what they want to do, right now. Like my daughter, we want to ride a bike, Daddy. Like, Let's go. She wants to ride the bike. My son wants to ride the bike. My son's like, look at her bikes because he wants to go out and do a, a century with me. Like it's, <laughs> well, yeah. Every my wife is training this this winter. Really? Yeah. Nice. She, yeah. Like it's like addictive. I got my brother is wanting to starting to train this okay. winter. Okay. So it's like it, like you say, is it matters when you start seeing people that you look up to or that you respect doing things because yeah. then you start bringing people along with you. Um, I'll talk about this anyway, but um, 
Like, yeah, because you working out, right, lowers the barrier for your kids to, to start working out. And then, like, they just want to ride a bike. They're not thinking about FTPs and whatnot. Like, yeah. so th- them getting, deciding to get into cycling or whatever, mm-hmm. right, will be vastly easier because they saw dad yeah. out there riding. So, um, again, things they will benefit from that they probably won't think about until, until later on. Until later, yeah. They're going to um, be happy, man. But, you know, of things for them to wish to have, like, a bike, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, like, yeah. You, you're going to use it, you're going to go out here and go with that. Like, <laughs> not the video games are bad, just saying. Yeah. Like, just there's things that, things that I have. Um, what was your favorite cycling event? What was it? Let me see. We know One Love was difficult. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, if the, the event you've shown up for, right, what do you say was, like, your most memorable, the one that, like, seemed to bring you the most joy? Let's go with that, yeah. All right, most joy. So first of all, mm-hmm. I don't like cycling events at all because they're all painful for me. Like, <laughs> I'm always in pain at every ride. I just deal with the pain. Um, but I would say the most memorable for me was the first cap to cap I did with, it was me, Andre, Mike Fleetwood, um, another guy at the time, his name was Andrew, mm-hmm. and um, Dan Dijak. And yeah, it was okay. a, it was an event that we did as a business as a company because we had we felt okay. like we got our health up high enough yeah. that we could do 100 miles. Okay. And what I liked about it is like I like like I said I'm here I'm like three, three ten three fifteen I'm crapping up bad. Yeah. We yeah. just came back up the trail from Williamsburg. We hit Kingsland, mm-hmm. about to go up Mill Road, and like mm-hmm. my whole body's just jacked up. Yeah. And Andre's like pushing me up the hill. Mm-hmm. he's pushing me up the hill and, and then somebody else pushes me up the hill and they're just taking turns pushing me up the hill yeah. and um, like just that in and of itself was like oh this is what this is about yeah you know this isn't about like being alone and seeing how if you can beat the next guy yeah. like this is about like doing something together yeah like and it was just kind of amazing because it's when you kind of really start thinking about it, even though I was the one getting pushed, yeah. all the other guys start realizing it too. Yeah, This is about being together and making sure that, you know, our team crosses the line together. Right. Um, and that was, that was great. I mean, even though it poured down raining, <laughs> you know, and I was, I cramped up so bad and I told Andre, I'd never tell anybody's story, but man, I'm telling it. He literally had to throw me on the ground mm-hmm. and like groin stretch me. And I was oh, like, really? bro, Nobody whip out a camera at all right now. <laughs> this is not cool. Like, to, this, you got to like, get home, man. Yeah. I, I, how did I get home? You know, I said, you got to get oh, home, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like, it's they made sure that I got home. And we made sure all each other got home. And when we pulled into the business, mm-hmm. we had ribs. We had barbecued everything. We mm-hmm. had alcohol. We had, because we celebrated doing our first 100 miles together as a team. Because we made it. Um, and that was... That was the most enjoyable ride for me. Okay. Yeah, the most enjoyable event. Nice. Okay. Um, least enjoyable. Oh, man. Oh. The, I, yeah, least enjoyable. I did Whatever this, reason. This was self-inflicted, this one. Mm-hmm. Because I really didn't, uh, I was really still still trying to figure out cycling at the time. Mm-hmm. Was um, Tour de Shore. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I disrespected cycling. Like, cycling is something you have to respect. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't, uh, I, I, and anybody that knows me knows that I respect it. Like, okay, I'm going to show up this time. I'm going to be, mm-hmm. you know, early. I'm going to try not to be late. When I'm late, people, you know, give me shit. Leo, yeah. Leo gives me shit when I'm late. But, like, I'm, I'm really about, I'm really about that life. So, and this is why, like, the day before, I was like, you know what? I'm young. Let me have a couple beers. Mm. Five, okay. six beers before the ride. Oh, yeah, let me, um, I don't need any carbs. Let me just, you know, eat some wings or something. Yeah. I got out there and just completely, like, died. Like, yeah. every single pedal stroke was painful. And I was like, I will never do that to myself again. Mm-hmm. Like, I finished the ride. Yeah. But it was, I, I will never disrespect cycling like that again. Like, ever. Like, ever. <clears throat> But, but until you do that, right? Until you like, you eat the full thing of ribs the night before or go out and eat this new meal of somewhere else, right? Yeah. You don't, 
until unless you've been pushing yourself and doing endurance, like you don't know, like oh, I my body didn't want me to do that the next <laughs> yeah. day, right? Um, yeah. You know, you don't you don't you don't really know it until you got a couple of examples of like you know what eating those carbs last night helped, yeah. right? You yeah. know, I felt I performed a little bit better, so you had to have that experience. Oh yeah, you know? I did. Yeah. Now you now you, now now you know. <laughs> never disrespect cycling, bro. I'm, I'm like I try to help people, but I'm like I try to help people, but yeah. if you listen, you listen. If you don't. I'm just trying to help you out, man, because I know what you're gonna go through if you don't respect it. You know, and and hopefully somebody will hear this, and you know, and they'll rethink, you know, drinking <laughs> those extra couple of beers the night before a long ride. Yeah. Um, I actually, we, we I actually put to. alcohol down completely. Really? Okay. Because it doesn't help. Like it doesn't help you at all. Like I, you know, you might see me have like one. Yeah. A week, but if you. It's nowhere near like it was. No, nah, because okay. it just, it doesn't, it makes me, it makes it so hard for me to reach my goals. Okay. As far as like, because I got to get my body the right stuff. Yeah. To be able to do what I'm trying to do. So yeah. if I, you, if I have a beer or if I have like some, some liquor or something. Yeah. Like it's, I know that it's going to be very hard for me to jump on the trainer the next day and mm-hmm. make the numbers I'm looking for and do the sprint trainings and do the hill climb. I like it just, so I'm, I'm just, I completely avoid it. Yeah. Unless it's like somebody's birthday yeah or somebody's last day at work or like it's got to be like a very specific type thing but other than that you won't see me touch it okay all right and that's a that's a that's a that's a healthy choice and you're you're trying to make more healthy choices so um you know i certainly respect that um okay all right um should you ride on the trainer absolutely okay yeah um classic trainer smart trainer what do you got you just class semi semi smart trainer um, fluid trainer. Okay. Um, I, I like it. Okay. I like it a lot. I mean, it taught me a lot about um, balance on a bike, mm-hmm. uh, how important your core is. Mm-hmm. Um, it, uh, gosh, your form, everything. Because on the specific trainer I have, if your form's not right, the bike's going to move. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, like it's going to lean so, to the right yeah. or the left and do all this. You got to be like, the form's got to be good. You got to be straight and pedal. <clears throat> and so it trains my, it trains my, the economy of cycling. Cause like you have three different from, like I said, I'm reading and thanks yeah. Andre for the book, by the way. Um, so there are like three different types of things that you're training on the bike when you're, tra- when you're training, you're training your economy, which is mm-hmm. how, how you're positioned on the bike mm-hmm. and how efficient your pedal stroke is and mm-hmm. making sure that you're pulling up and down, don't have dead spots in your stroke. Okay. Um, then you're also training your anaerobic. Mm-hmm. which is your FTP type, you know, workout so that if mm-hmm. you want to switch between your anaerobic and your aerobic, you can. Um, your aerobic is more like the spinning when mm-hmm. you're like, if you're, if you're going to pull or if you're going to go up a hill, you're a heavier guy like me, you spin. So you put all the burden on your uh, respiratory system Okay. so that then you can like get up that hill. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're, if you want to then give your respiratory system a break, then you go anaerobic and you start just slowing down your cadence and just putting the power into the pedals. Okay. Okay, um, so you you're like you're following training programs as you're going in. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Okay, um, are you like how are you following the training program? Like are you just like is it what's in Zwift or like you got? Uh, mine is like a um, so mine is a there's a it's called a it's like Trainer Road but it isn't. It's actually one that's built into my trainer for Kurt Kin- Kurt Kinetic. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I knew that. I um. I knew they had their their own yeah. um, trainer type deal in there. Yeah. So you're watching. You clearly watch what you eat, right? Um. What do you take with you on the ride? Like, what are your what are your mm. snack choices? Because clearly you got an intake there. Yeah, Telling all my secrets, man. Uh. So what do I take during the ride? What do you take? Yeah. Because I imagine there's a different there's a different packing for. Mm. I'm gonna do 40 miles, right? I'm gonna yeah. do 30 or 40. As opposed to like, I'm going to do 80, 100 yeah. miles, right? It's a different stuff you take in for that ride, or yeah. at least different quantities. So usually for me, like up to about 50 miles, I'm just doing, um, I'm just doing BCAAs. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? Water, BCAAs. Uh, um, what is it? Electrolytes. Mm-hmm. Um, civic electrolytes I take are Pedialyte. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I take Pedialyte. It works great. Okay. Um, and uh, and one bottle of uh, Infinite. Okay. So and I'll take some of that, and so and I'll have a couple of gels. Okay. So I have a couple of gels. Um, 
And that's what I have. Now, if I go over 50, yeah. I start getting the metric territory, then I need to have that and then like something like that I have to chew. Okay, some solid. Yeah, okay. something solid so that I can digest all that. But usually, that's all I'm, that's all I'm rocking up really? to 50 miles, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh man, you're 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 burning a lot, man. If you're yeah. not the, not yeah. much intake of there, yeah. I mean the gels is clearly calories there. Yeah, you know, but the, the infinite itself is like a infinite's like a powder. What is that? It it's is like a, a powder, but it, it keeps you from it's it's actually you you don't have to eat as much when you drink that because that's actually um, that's actually giving you fuel as well. Okay, so that's the the, the thing about infinite is when you drink it, you're having the fuel. Mm-hmm. I've actually haven't have had to carry less when I started drinking Infinite okay. than when I wasn't. Okay. So when I wasn't drinking Infinite, I'd have to have like, you know, a Cliff Bar, which I can't stand anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was eating Lara Bars before Infinite. Mm, like okay. Those I love. Um, but up to fifty, up to about fifty miles, I'm just gels, Infinite, BCAAs, and Pedialyte, and okay. maybe a Snickers at mile twenty-five. Okay. And I'm just rolling. I feel great, but. You know, if I'm doing a century or a metric, yeah. I gotta have like a Snickers, Lara bars. I gotta have like something, I, something like I can chew. Eat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you stick to all your own. That's my fridge doing its the thing. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be great to have in here. Um, what do you want to see at the rest stops? Or do you like do you when you go to the rest stops at the events, right? Do you still just stick to your own stuff, or do you like what what would you like to see at rest stops? Salt sticks. Salt sticks. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, I take um, salt sticks. With, pickle juice is good, but salt sticks are like clutch. Okay. Like when it comes to people catching cramps. Yeah. They are clutch. Like I, I carry salt sticks on long rides as well. Okay. Yeah. Like I learned that at Mac 1. I just, you know, I hadn't cramped up until Mac 1. And then yeah. mile 75 hit. Yeah. And my whole body was just like like a cartoon just like you just start malfunctioning right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and uh you know there's a young lady I heard, they call her pocahontas and krt but she gave me like two salt pills okay and like i took those and i stretched mm-hmm. and i got me the rest rest of the like 25 of the miles but yeah the issue with cramps is they just they steal your power mm-hmm. like once you catch them you can't put the power down or it's more psychological that you don't want to put it down because you don't want to catch any more cramps. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, salt sticks, yes, for the okay. win. Because I carry those religiously on long rides. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's, well, you know, nobody wants to get a cramp, but like mm-hmm. it's good to learn, like, okay, this is going to lead to it, and this side of cramp, this is what the cramp is going to look mm-hmm. like, what it's going to feel like once I have one, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so that's the lesson you, you took away from Mac 1. Oh, yeah, you absolutely. Know? Um, you know the salt the salt sticks work um if you ask haywood i think when we did the tour to midnight remember we ran up yeah on him yeah he was crazy. Oh, that's crazy. right yeah he was i gave him salt <laughs> sticks and then he was great he was back to doing 22 miles yeah. an hour yeah <laughs> um my god we fell out they were not they were not sticking to the pace Mm-mm. no that never happens like so you talk about Wolfpack. Wolfpack never sticks to the pace, man. Like they'll tell you it's a chill ride, and, it, and it, it's never a chill ride. Like we don't have recovery rides. Like forget it. I think one time, like this one time, uh, we're we're out riding. It was Sunday, mm-hmm. and uh, everybody's like, "Yeah, it was going to be a recovery ride." And uh, we get like ten miles into it, and Lynn goes, "What is recovery about this?" Like, you know, <laughs> it was hilarious. And, 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 and Tam was like, "I don't know. This is not recovery." Like, what y'all talking about? She's like, no, I hate you. And it was, you know, but we do this, like, because we're brothers and sisters. I hate you, you MFs, and this, this, and this town was cussing us out. No, this is not a recovery ride. Slow this pace down. And we're just all live. She's like, it is not funny. I do not like any of you right now. But, uh, yeah, there, there's no such thing as a recovery ride in WPA. I do some, some chill rides, man. Um, <laughs> you know. So there was supposed to be a chill ride. Um, the ride through the city. Was or it something last like that. week? Was that? Did you okay. see we me me beach? So it's me beach, Andre, and uh, <laughs> yeah, right. This yeah. is already getting bad. Yeah. And so uh, Micah Jewel. Yeah. We're supposed to do a chill forty-seven mile ride in Chesterfield, and I'm like, I know this is not going to be a chill ride because yeah. Micah always wants smoke. Yeah. And you know Andre and Beach ain't gonna let that sit, and I'm kind of mm-hmm. like I'm just gonna be along for the ride I'm gonna be the balls at the end yeah be a drug alone and so 
you know, it was supposed to be a chill ride, but we ended up like running like 27, 28, all the way down River Road. Really? Just floating it, just floating it, man. And I'm just like, this is, this is not a chill ride. We don't never do chill rides, man. I gotta do a ride, an urban ride, ride through the city. Too many stoplights, so we'll put that to put that yeah. to stop. You know, yeah. um, uh, donut ride. Oh yeah, that was a blast. Donut rides chillish because you got to stop so much, right? Yeah. Donut ride was a little bit chill, yeah. you know. Except down Hermitage, they oh, yeah. was flying down. Yeah, down Hermitage. Rolling, man. <laughs> yeah, it just because what what happens is some of us will be like, I'm ready to stop riding, and then mm-hmm. we'll just pick the pace up. Yeah, and just keep going. Um, okay. Um, climbing. Have you you done any big climbs? Yeah. Um, is that I have you're not. Okay. That, that is in the schedule. We actually had, um, we were going to go right out in Blue Ridge November, but it okay. didn't happen. The wives shut that down. Okay. So like, you know, we get, we, you know, we get um, some leeway, but yeah. you get to a point where the wife's like, yeah, we got to shut this shit down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. Doing, you're doing too much. I mean, I get it, but yeah, we're going to shut this shit down this week. <laughs> uh, I, I do recommend a ride out in the Blue Ridge Parkway. During the fall and and plot it out a little, you know, of course, plan it out. Don't go out there just, just willy nilly, but because um, it is awesome. Like, I'm not one to get all, you know, I need to see the trees, and the, but like, it is nice to go. You climb up, you go to the different overlooks, and like, you can look down to the place. Where, like, I was down there, okay. right, and I came up here. I'm at this little overlook, and I can see a lake in the distance, kind of thing. Um, and it feel it feels good, and like you did this. You would have driven this, but yeah. you did this via bike, right? Yeah. And it is nice to go out there and see the fall colors and the trees and things like that, man. So um, if y'all can put together a ride on the Blue Ridge Parkway, um, I, I definitely recommend it. Okay. You know, um, y'all hear that? You got a request? <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's not that hard. Like, you can do it as a day trip. Like, y'all can yeah. like do it as a Saturday or Sunday. Go out, go do Maybe not now. You could do it now. The temperature's decent. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, do but, it, you can do it Saturday. It's going to be 70 degrees Saturday. I think it's 77. It's supposed to be se- like 77 this Saturday. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be I mean, nice. I like warm days, but I don't know how much I want like a 70 degree day in a December. It just seems yeah. ominous. Like yeah. that that's. Yeah. I know what you mean. It is going to be warm. Okay. But there's a high chance of rain. Okay. Yeah. A high chance of rain. We'll see how that pans out. But you're. Oh, uh, wait. I'm looking at. I'm looking at DC. Uh, as we look at the weather while talking yeah, to the yeah, podcast, man, you know, um, seventy, yeah. yeah I'll cool. at least get outside. I'll at least do something. I'll take a walk at least. It's a hundred percent um, chance of rain up here. <laughs> am I changing the weather? Yes, I am. It's gonna be sixteen percent chance in Virginia Beach. I know where I'm going. Um, <laughs> are you a? Are do you say you got a, y'all got a ride planned? Mm-hmm. And it's drizzling, right? The ride was planned. Are you a? Nah, I'm gonna stay home. Or you just like. I'm, I'm good like where's where's the line at um well so Wolfpack is very funny about this because funny as in like we're probably gonna ride okay. right and so we've been caught in like some like torrential downpours mm-hmm. trying to avoid like black we see black cows coming and we're like you know what if we average at least 23 we could beat those clouds you know what I'm saying like we're, we're that kind of like ride yeah and so um we're probably gonna ride Okay. If it if it if it looks like the clouds are gonna go that way, we're riding the bike. Like these okay. people are seriously addicted to the sport. So, <laughs> um, it is. Yeah. I don't say everyone should experience getting out, being out on the bike, mm-hmm. and getting like dumped on rain wise. Mm-hmm. But it is a, like, what the fuck do I do now? Like it's a it's a it's yeah. a moment of like, you're 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 getting rained on. Mm-hmm. Your shoes have gotten soaked. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know, what do you, do you keep riding? Do you pull over? I think I pulled over. Have I pulled over once? Have I pulled over once? I did. There was one time I can recall that I, I stopped riding while it was raining, but that was because I didn't, it was a really steep hill. And I can, that's the one time I can remember dismounting when I was going up a hill that, yeah. that I've started riding. It was because it was raining. I was like, you know what? It's not worth it. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, but yeah, I would, I would hope everybody experienced that in some degree, getting rained on a little bit. And surviving, right? You realize oh, yeah. you didn't you didn't oh, yeah. die. You, know? you didn't die. It makes it actually more um <clears throat> makes it more uh of a better experience. Like I can tell you, like I think there was a there was a ride we were doing, it was me, Chris, uh, Dave Randolph, mm-hmm. and was it Clarence? Yeah, it was Clarence. And we're doing Black Black Creek. Mm-hmm. And 
I don't think Randolph had gotten the, had gotten stuck in the rain before. And I mean, it literally the sky was opening up, you mm-hmm. know, branches were falling off of trees yeah. and like and me and Chris were just like, Well, let's keep descending, just keep the distance apart yeah. and just yeah. keep going. Yeah. And Randolph was like, These dudes are fucking nuts. Like yeah. they're out here just doing their thing. Yeah. And then like we get up to the top of the hill right before the church, he goes, You could just see the fear in his eyes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, Why are we still doing this? I was like, yeah. Look, like we're out here. Right. You got really no choice at this point. You might as well right. just finish it off and get get to where you're trying to go. But it was just hilarious to watch Randolph just he was genuinely like his voice cracked. Like, yeah. we gotta find everybody. Yeah. It's like, Dave, it'll be all right, man. <laughs> yeah. It once you I and I understand that, like yeah. it, not having done on a regular basis, like, whoa, oh, I, I shouldn't be we shouldn't be doing this. Like, why are we out here? <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um you know. Um but you, you, you survived. You're like, yeah. you know what? Yeah, that was uncomfortable. Stuff got wet. I'll be, but, but we lived, you know? I'm not going to be doing 22 miles an hour in it. Right? <laughs> but, you know, we're okay. Just slow down a little bit. Spread spread out. That's yeah. the thing people do spread forget. Out. is like spread out a little yeah. bit. You're still going to keep riding, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so um, you were doing a bit of riding before 2020, right? Yeah. Um, so when 2020 happened, and I, and I like to ask people about because we – all had some experience with with COVID and the pandemic, right? Kind of. How did that? How did that impact like the cycling you were doing, like the ride and that kind of thing? Or maybe it didn't. Like, how? What was the impact of, you know, the global pandemic on you? I saw on it your as ride? a blessing. Yeah. Okay. I, I saw the global pandemic really as a blessing. I mean, um, we. I think we. What we have finally started to wake up. Yeah. Like to you know as as like as a people like of what's really important about life um <clears throat> what i can tell you is for me is uh, my eyes are i was already going through like kind of an awakening in life like what's important to me health is wealth um but covid really kind of turbocharged that yeah like i was able to ride even more okay and i was i was able to spend even more time with my family and kids okay and then i started realizing that you know, you actually miss a whole lot more than you think you do. Yeah. Like, you know, it's you're out here, you know, a man goes out, he hunts, he kills moose, brings it back. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what we're doing. But do we really need to keep going out, killing mooses and bringing them back? If we got all this technology, we could just kind of talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it really put me in a perspective of how 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 asleep I was Um so even what was going on in my own house with my children, like I thought I knew them, but yeah. being there with them every day, I'm like, oh, like, mm-hmm. I'm like I'm getting to know my kids, like, and then like I'm getting to really hear them, like, um, versus me just thinking about what I got to do at work and and riding the bike, and then that little hour I give you at the end of the day or that little yeah. two hours, like it's like it's not enough, like, and then you start realizing, okay. Like it's life is a whole hell of a lot more than just going out and killing that moose and and getting that check, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And COVID has really like helped a lot of people out with that. And I don't know, man. I, th- I hope we take that as a lesson, like, and we just continue to have that as a lesson, like, for right. the rest of our lives. Yeah, it. Yeah, the hope is that people realize. Yeah, they did think about like what really mattered, like what was really important. You know about the was it was it all the socializing mm-hmm. you know that i that i wasn't able to do was it the going out to the dinners and the restaurants and all the other things that we could again COVID was bad mm-hmm. like, yeah absolutely. not handed down but um you know um and it realized like what was really important your your close circle the people really going to take care of you when things are really going yeah. down um so i'm i'm glad you 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 found some some high points mm-hmm. in that absolutely know? um yeah. so um now uh, when you started getting your changing, completely changing subjects here, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. like your your kit, right? That you because you were riding the wolf pack kit, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, did you have? Were you able to like how to put this? Like, was it trial and error? Did you just get stuff from Amazon? Like your your kit that you first got? Like your was your coworker like your manager, right? He, like so, like <clears throat> for me, it was about. Um, so the amount of investment I make in something shows to me makes shows my commitment to it. Okay. So in the beginning, yeah, I was like Amazon and this and that because you know I'm like I'm a deal hunter, mm-hmm. and then I also did also didn't realize um, how much I would like it, right? 
Right. And so as I started liking it more and spending more time in the saddle, I start realizing that Amazon can't get it. Yeah. Like it can't because I'm, I'm spending like four or five, six hours on a bike. Yeah. Like Amazon's not built for that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I had to invest some real money into it because I started like really liking it. Yeah. And um, like we have a, for instance, we have a bike Nazi on our team. We call him Chris Clark. <laughs> and he'll go around and like if your bike's dirty or yeah. you're like you're riding like using a cheap kit you'll yeah. know he'll, you'll know because he'll be like look you want your stuff to last save your money get you get this get this stuff yeah because like if you spend the money your stuff will last a long time yeah so um, Chris does keep his bike clean oh yeah super clean um, which I clean the drivetrain do not keep my bike mm. that clean which I should be mm -hmm. um uh, what's something that you're aware of now, right, with your with your cycling, that you would have wanted to tell yourself at the start, like when you were just you know doing the ride, like what's something you would have like travel back in time? You got to tell somebody just a few things. Tell yourself a few things. Like what's something you want to tell yourself like at the start? Um, I would say camoa cream. <laughs> <laughs> Kemwa cream, Kemwa yeah. cream. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh, uh, I would also say um, speed is not, average speed is not important. Okay. Like, that's what I would tell myself. Average speed is not important. Okay. Um, that's what I would tell myself in the past. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the cream is real important. Yeah. You know, we realize it at the wrong time. Like, oh, I'm 20 miles out. And I should have yeah. had this. I should have had this. Yeah. But it's weird. Like, I, what was it? Okay. You clearly did some ride without it. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, was it, did a thing happen? Like the worst case, a chafe, and then you got it? Or would like, so, you just eventually, like somebody convinced you, like, what was the turning point of like, I'm going to put this weird stuff down there. Like, <laughs> right. Because that's what it is. Like, yeah. it's just, you yeah. know. It's hard to explain to non cyclists. Yeah, I mean, it's like, um, so uh, the so what made me think about camo cream was yeah. I was spending so much time on the bike, and in the past, like you know, I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, my ass is just a, a wimp and needs to wear, you know, wear in or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, eventually, yeah, you're good for about 20, 30 miles, but yeah. if you're spending like sixty. Mm -hmm. Like it's there, nobody's butt is that tough. Like there's, <laughs> there's just no one out there, and so like I was doing a lot of miles. Like so, as I saw my miles average up to 200 miles a week, I was like, yeah, yeah stuff's not going back the way it's supposed to. <laughs> so I got I got to figure this out, and so I actually put something out in the chat. Yeah, um, it was immature, but I did. I yeah. put something out in the chat, and I was like, hey man, what do you guys rub on your your, your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and everybody started laughing. Yeah. Because like I'm I have the personality is like if there's a question I'm gonna ask it. Like okay. because I'm I'm an authentic person I'm gonna ask you what do you what do you put on your stuff because yeah. I can't keep doing this and so everybody had their recommendations and um, yeah I just started running camo cream. Okay. The one I liked the most was uh, honey butter. Ooh, like, okay. They're really good. Like this the the I know the. The, the standard one that's out there, the original, that's that's good. But the yeah. honey butter one is like, hands down for me, is the best. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is a it is a personal, <laughs> it is a super personal yes, choice. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I got, uh, I think I was like looking at bicycling. Because I started, I didn't use chamois cream. Mm -hmm. And I looked at bicycling.com and there was... um they have like a list of like good chamois cream but either it was one it was these nuts right yep, yep yep and um and i and i was using it, it was great mm -hmm. but i didn't read enough to agree because it's got menthol in there mm -hmm. right so it like it needs to go in a certain area yep. and not <laughs> not anywhere out of that zone um and it was a couple of occasions it was like yeah. oh it slipped out of the zone you know <laughs> it's like i'm not happy about that man um but i thought it was yeah like I, I loved it. It was called these nuts, and I kept the bottle even after I ran out for like two years because I just like I just liked it. It was called these nuts. Oh but, yeah. Um, yeah. N never with the menthol again. <laughs> I've learned that lesson. Um, but uh, I'm glad that you <laughs> you learned about the chamois cream. Yeah. And you would share that with yourself. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, well, Jeff, I 
I want to like thank you for your time, man. Um, I I have enjoyed the conversation, you know, because the last time we were riding together, like it's hard to have a conversation yeah. while you're trying to stay alive. Yes, yes. You know, um, but that day ended up pretty pretty good, man. We 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 stuck together. I didn't want to. I think I could have pushed a little bit more, but I was like, you know what? No, I was dead. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna just ride. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna ride with Jeff. He's yeah. gonna make sure he's gonna get back. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> and I was happy to not have to keep up. Because they were pushing, oh, they were man. rolling, yeah. yeah. They, they said the pace is going to be 22. And see, what happens with, with the pack um, is um, people will see you, yeah. and then they just, let me jump on. Mm-hmm. Let me get in the pace lot. Let me yeah. see what I could do. And then the issue that comes with that is we all don't ride the same, and so you end up burning more energy trying to get those people out of your pace lot. Because okay. we're, because I, I, you know what I'm saying, I know how people ride in the pack yeah so i can adjust to that and we know how we're supposed to ride mm-hmm. but if somebody's not in the pack and they jump in yeah like they spin they stop pedaling they spin they stop pedaling. Oh, right and yeah, then, yeah like that yeah. drives you up a wall and it burns up energy so, it is it is the benefits of, of riding with a, a, a group regularly you know and knowing who they not that we can't ride with strangers completely fine mm-hmm. But it is like it's the benefit of riding with people regularly. Like you know, you know so and so is a little squirrel. You know so and so when they see someone pass, they gonna chase them. Yeah. Like, you know, um, and knowing that is a great benefit. Like having, you know, a tribe. You know what I'm saying? Like, a group of people you you just you you feel safe riding with. You know how they're gonna ride, man. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I'm glad that you you got a group to ride with, man. Yeah, man. I'm happy. Um, but yeah, Jeff, I I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate you you coming out and sharing your story, man. Um. And I, I hope you continued success in your writing, man. Absolutely. Thank you. No Thank problem. You. Yeah.